Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Today, I'm going to try and come at you guys with something a little bit different. I figured I'd take a quick break from this whole prop punk thing and make something I've been wanting to make for quite a while now, but just never got around to it. I'm super excited for this build, by the way. But before I get too much into that, I'm rather excited today because just before I started recording this, uh, Patch Bits actually released a video on Flyout. For those who are looking for more content, feel free to check him out. I'll make sure to leave the link to that one in the description down below. I'll also leave the link to my server in the description below where you guys can suggest different builds or maybe participate in the prop punk universe or really do whatever you want. But again, that's just self-promotion and I guess other people's promotion too since I mentioned that dude who made the video anyways, that's not the point. Basically, ignoring all that, in the most simple terms possible, I'm trying to design a fighter aircraft with artificial stability. Now some of you, certainly not all of you, but some of you may be asking, Messier, what is artificial stability? So I'll put it in terms as simple as possible. Artificial stability is when your plane is more tail heavy than a traditional design, but uses electronics or flyby wire to maintain stability therefore making your plane artificially stable through the use of electronics. When a plane is tail heavy, it simply means that the center of mass is further back in regards to the center of pressure. When the center of mass or the weight is too far back, the plane will want to continually move in the direction you're steering it in. For example, if you start to pitch upwards, your plane may continue to pitch upwards even if you don't have an input. Too far back and your plane will simply flip uncontrollably and be basically completely unable to fly. The best way I can really compare this to like a real life scenario is kind of like oversteer in a car. When a car has more friction and more grip in the front, the rear end kicks and you may end up splitting out. This is why so many modern cars are front wheel or all wheel drive so that way when you hit the throttle the front loses traction before the rear, therefore making it easier to control in slippery conditions but I'm not exactly, you know, a car channel, am I? So, basically, the thing about tail-heavy planes, especially in fighter aviation, is that they possess incredible maneuverability characteristics. So, in many ways, it's a trade-off. For a less stable design, you can achieve more maneuverability, but obviously you run the risk of losing control, and the pay the, the, I can't speak, the pilot may fatigue far quicker trying to constantly control such an unstable airframe. So, up until, uh, I'd honestly say the 70s, tail-heavy designs were generally avoided in aviation due to the massive drawbacks. But that's the fun part of artificial stability, you get to have the best of both worlds. A very maneuverable aircraft, and it's easy to control. So obviously I was very excited to make this design. It's such an interesting concept and since you can simulate it in flyout using AOA response, and with a command point fly-by-wire system, Basically, if you click on Jimmy, you'll find a whole array of settings you can modify to add a sort of fly-by-wire flight control effect to your aircraft. So basically, by modifying the AOA response of the canards and slats, along with the damping, G-limiter, and control gain on the fly-by-wire, we were able to create an artificially stable aircraft. Of course, to show you guys what this actually does, I'll have to... At the end of the video, I'm probably going to record like a little segment of me trying to fly the plane without fly-by-wire so we can see how it goes. I haven't actually recorded it yet at the time of this, but chances are it's not going to go too well. But anyways, now I can actually talk about the goals of the aircraft. No need to list them or anything since it's pretty simple, but the goals are basically to make an aircraft with a further back um, center of mass and control it or make it completely stable through the use of fly-by-wire and active canards and all that garbage. I'm sure I can't find it and I probably won't post a screenshot of it in the editing, but there was one guy who has suggested this like at least five or so times, so whoever you are, if you're still watching my videos, I hope you enjoy this one. Also, you know what? For like a half a second before I explain my build here, I wanted to tell you guys something. I've actually figured out a large problem with my editing software and why it was lagging so bad. So now I can actually review my recordings a little bit better and maybe even add more stuff to them. And of course, that will come with the benefit of my timing being actually on point in the video, which should be, you know, pretty fantastic. But at this point, as per usual, I feel like I'm already like halfway done with the build and I'm just getting around to describing what the heck is going on right now. 
So basically, while I was recording and while I was building this thing, I had my good friend Amanda in the chat as well as a few other people. So I asked uh, what her favorite plane was. A rather interesting answer to be sure, but she answered the uh, Kefir, which is the Israeli modification of the Mirage. So I wanted to base this plane a little bit around the Kefir. Of course, we'd have the single engine, we'd have the side intakes, we'd have the canards, and we'd have the delta wings. Obviously, there were going to be a ton of differences between this aircraft and the Kefir. It is going to be nothing like the Kefir. It is not going to be a replica of the Kefir in any way. I am just saying that because I vaguely inspired the design off of that with the single engine and the delta wings. Obviously, we're going to have canards anyways, because this thing was meant to be artificially stable, and those would help me with maneuvering. I guess in many ways it also kind of reminded me more of a Gripen, or the Saab Gripen, J39, whatever you want to call it, more than it did the Kefir at the end, but whatever. Now I am adding the canards, and but you know what else was a pretty big difference between this aircraft? Is that it was a twin-seater, which I thought was kind of fun. I don't know why I did it as a twin-seater, it really didn't need to be a twin-seater, I just personally really enjoy twin-seaters and I enjoy building them. Maybe it's because I played too much uh, Project Wingman, or maybe too much DCS and heard too many of Jester's voice lines, but I really like the concept of flying a plane and having someone in the back, I don't know, it, it, it just seems interesting to me, don't ask me. We're, having, we're, we're like compiling a list of things Messier likes on his aircraft, he really likes twin booms. I really like twin booms, and I really like twin seaters. I guess I just like two a lot. Also, I've decided from this point on, unless I'm doing a tutorial or something special that specifically regards the interior, I'm probably going to keep the interior building entirely out of the video. I mentioned it last video, but it's just simply too tedious to actually include, and it, it takes way too long. And then unless you want to be sitting here for like an extra 10 minutes with me trying to explain what the heck is going on, then I wouldn't really recommend keeping that in the video. But I guess it's really up to you guys. Anything like that or any other suggestions or any ideas you may have, feel free to talk about them in the comments below. You know, I was also watching um, Patch Bits video earlier, and he mentioned the whole tech tree thing, like you could build your own tech tree like War Thunder. And I also kind of thought that was a fun idea. I might... I'm not gonna steal the idea, obviously, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to do something original, but I kinda do wanna do something like that in the future. But you know what, you know, you know what, you know, you know, you know what's really exciting about this video, real quick, is that for once I'm actually showing me, you know, building a livery or a camouflage on the aircraft. This is also my first ever attempt at an actual camouflage, believe it or not. Somehow I've played this game for almost 300 hours, and, well, that's... Technically on Steam I have over 300 hours, but I, I've spent far too much time with this game idle just checking Discord or doing whatever instead of actually playing the game. So I'm just gonna say like an actual building time, it's probably al almost 300 hours. But I'm getting way off topic again. Somehow I have almost 300 hours in this game and I have literally never done a single camouflage pattern yet. I've done like crappy like half camo patterns and then gave up, but I never did an actual camo pattern. And you know why I did this? I saw like a, a picture of an F-18 with like a winter splinter camo, and I was inspired to make my own winter splinter camo. That's another thing if I do camos more in the future. I love arctic camos and winter camos. I just love the colors on them, the blues, the whites, the purples, the blacks. I just think they're cool. So you know, you're probably gonna see a lot more of those in the future too. One of these days I'll have a build with all three of the things I like. It'll be a twin seater, it'll be a twin boom, and it'll have a winter camo. Yeah, it'll be the perfect messier plane. Fun part about flyout though, right? You can just do that if you want to, no one's stopping you. Anyways, with all of that out of the way, and a lot of detail work, and interior work, and exterior work, and all that junk cut out, and weathering cut out, we were ready to fly. I'm saying is this thing literally just put the maneuverable and super maneuverability like 
Actually, technically, by definition, it isn't super maneuverable because super maneuvering means anything that isn't aerodynamic forces, but that's not the point. I'm not about to nerd emoji myself on my own joke, so let's just move on. This plane was literally my favorite plane to fly that I think I've ever made in Flyout. It just handles perfectly. Like, it just does exactly what you want it to, it doesn't fuss about it, it's not like hard to fly. And you know what, it turns like crazy too. Like, at its, at, at its like peak sustain turn rate, it can sustain like 26 degrees per second, which is just nuts. I mean, a lot of that is attributed to the massive afterburner power I gave it, but still. I swear to god, sometimes this thing could probably turn fight with a biplane. Like, at like 400 miles an hour, 500 miles an hour, you literally just pull a constant 10G without slowing down. And I, that, that's just where the G limiter is set to. And then, you know, once you slow down a bit, I've gotten this thing to do a instantaneous pull of like 45 degrees per second at low speeds. It can move its nose around no problem. But luckily, due to the AOA response of the canards, as well as the AOA authority limiter in the flight control system, or FCS, or whatever you'd like to call it, it actually flies really pleasantly despite that insane instantaneous turn rate that's indicative of a tail-heavy aircraft. Honestly, it's really pleasant to fly, and like, this little flight recording that I did here, I ended up cutting a lot of it out, but 90% of it's just like me flying between buildings or down the airfield or through mountains and all that junk just because I find it fun in this airplane. And you know, that's also why I'm kind of glad I gave it such a nice interior. I'm probably going to work on the uh, Wizzo's station after this video because I didn't end up actually making it on this build so I could actually get it out in time to you guys. But the interior for at least the... For, for at least the pilot, it just looks fantastic, and it makes it so much more fun to fly in first person. Right now I'm using an Xbox controller, but honestly, I gotta like plug in my flight stick and try and fly this thing around some. That's fantastic. But anyways, instead of wasting everyone's time with footage of me flying between mountains for an hour, I'm just going to show you guys what happens when you don't have flight control on this thing, because it was actually a pretty funny flight. Alright, here I go with no fly-by-wire. I immediately do like an almost Cobra off of takeoff there that you guys saw. I saw too. And I'm like fighting this thing from tip stalling constantly, like 24-7. There is never... I keep like pulling back full on the stick like that and instantly going into a Cobra or, or tip stalling or whatever. But there is never an actual point in time on this aircraft where you want to do that like pulling full back on the stick at any point except for right there for some reason is basically just suicide and i i almost die because of it there and then i tip stall again and almost die again it's 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 really not a pleasant plane to fly if you guys can't tell coming back around here let's see it happen here yeah i i, I tip stall again and i just hit the ground <laughs> but i'm still going i'm in the air again and you know what's funny is that hitting the ground actually knocked a bit of my tail off. It knocked two components off of my tail. And I'm actually balanced now. This, this is an aerodynamically balanced aircraft all of a sudden. So, um, I guess for those of you wondering, if you want an aerodynamically stable aircraft, all you have to do is take an unstable aircraft and hit it into the ground and it magically become stable. On that note, I uh, guess it's time to end. Thank you all for joining me and see you in the next one. Uh, have fun smashing your unstable airplanes into the ground to make them fly properly. Goodbye.